everyone, I'm Dave. Hope you're having a good weekend. Thank you for tuning in as always. Today, we'll be checking in on the progress of some new and up and coming rockets that are soon to hit the market, do some comparisons, check how fast they're progressing and what the latest is with them. If you're new here, please do consider hitting that subscribe button by the end of the video. Every new subscriber is so much appreciated and thank you as always to my current subscribers and channel members. With that out of the way, let's dive into this week's Rocket Roundup. Starting off with Rocket Lab's Neutron because I suspect there are quite a few Rocket Lab fans of this channel and of fans of Neutron as well. So we'll start off with that first. Not going into a ton of detail though, because we have a lot of rockets to cover today. But I can tell you that Rocket Lab recently announced the fairing qualification was complete on their next gen Neutron rocket. They, have, they now have one more box checked off green on the path to liftoff. With the design, structure, and operations of Neutron's fixed reusable fairing and upper module now proven out, Hungry Hippo is ready for launch. They open and close Neutron's fairing halves in flight-like conditions under 1.5 seconds, which is less than half the amount of time required for a successful stage separation and vehicle reorientation returning towards Earth. They also placed 250,000 pounds of force distributed across the carbon composite structure to simulate the load experience during max Q, which is the maximum aerodynamic pressure experienced by the vehicle. They also performed 125% mechanical load testing of the canards that will help to guide stage one's trajectory through the atmosphere and land back on the ground. The Hungry Hippo is currently on a barge right now, headed towards the launch site. And in terms of that launch site, everything was completed this summer that is needed for a first launch. However, this site is still very much in stage one and the complex will have future upgrades continuing. Most recently, we saw the second stage test stand lifted into place at the top of the launch mount for stage two static fire testing. Archimedes testing does continue at NASA's Stennis Space Center with a second test cell now opened and operating to allow for a 27 rate, meaning engines are being tested 20 hours a day, seven days a week. It's hard to get more than that. The upper stage engine or vacuum optimized engine is also on the test stand as well and, continue, and work continues for qualification testing. The recovery barge is currently being upgraded to get ready for flight two. That flight one will not be a recovery operation, but hopefully flight two, the barge will be ready to go. Currently it is in a shipyard in Louisiana with three main propulsion generating sets being delivered that can generate more than three megawatts of electric power. The barge is planned to enter service in 2026 and Rocket Lab is making it a point to make sure it's quite powerful and fast. They don't waste too much time during a transit from the ocean back to the launch complex. Currently, we do expect Neutron's first launch to be in 2026, in my opinion, most likely in the second half of 2026. And while rocket programs, including Neutron, are notorious for delays, uh, we do finally have a launch date here that I am pretty confident with. I would be quite shocked if Neutron does not actually launch in 2026. Okay, next up is land space. So Chinese companies are catching up fast in the world of reusable rockets and even surpassing some of the old school American companies. These Chinese companies certainly aren't afraid to take a page or two or even frankly an entire chapter or two out of SpaceX's playbook. Landspace is the latest company to make headlines with their Chui 3 rocket, and I'm sorry, I'm sure I just butchered that pronunciation, but it did have its first launch in December, th in December of 2025. It looks a lot like the Falcon 9, but it's made out of stainless steel and is using liquid methane fuel like the Starship. This rocket can deliver about 18,000 kilograms with a downrange barge landing, and this is practically the same capability as the Falcon 9 as well. Uh, the rocket did successfully reach orbit on that December 3rd launch attempt. It separated its stages and the second stage reached its intended orbit with a payload mass simulator. 
The rocket then attempted a first stage booster recovery, which is the first time that any Chinese rocket has ever attempted this feat. The first stage executed a controlled re-entry and guided it itself to within meters of the landing pad. However, an abnormal combustion occurred during the landing burn and the booster hit the ground at high speed and exploded. Nonetheless, this was an extremely impressive display from land space and it seems, and it seems certain that they'll nail the recovery soon after they got so close on this attempt. Chinese companies certainly don't get as much attention in the Western world, but they really are making progress fast, and I think land space is certainly one to watch. Next up, a rocket we're all probably pretty familiar with at this point, New Glenn. On November 13th, 2025, New Glenn successfully completed its second ever flight, carrying NASA's Escapade spacecraft, which were made by Rocket Lab. The spacecraft are headed to a brief layover at a Lagrange point before going on to Mars. The rocket had a flawless ascent from Cape Canaveral, although it's a little bit slow getting off the pad. This makes it two for two on launch attempts, showing impressive reliability already in the rocket's short life. In a historic first for the company, the first stage booster also successfully landed on a seabase platform and will be recovered. Blue Origin also recently announced a sweeping set of upgrades to the new Glenn that will create a super heavy variant. Instead of the seven current BE-4 engines, the 9x4 new Glenn variant will have nine BE-4s on the first stage and four on the upper stage. This increases its capacity to 70 tons to LEO versus the current 45 tons, and they've also increased its height to 120 meters from 98, as well as the fairing diameter from seven meters to 8.7 so they can fit wider payloads in that rocket. These upgrades make New Glenn a very capable super heavy vehicle and frankly, in my opinion, uh, put the file, final nail in the coffin on any reason to continue with the SLS program. But uh, hopefully we do get astronauts on the moon, at least with the SLS before its retirement. I do have to say, after a slow and long development, Blue Origin under new CEO David Limp does really seem like they're turning the corner here, and they are an exciting company to watch in the future for the space industry. Next up is Stokes Nova rocket. So Stokes Space's Nova has long made headlines for attempting full reusability, which is something that currently only the Starship is shooting for, or at least confirmed to be shooting for. I know there's been rumors about Project Jarvis with Blue Origin and some other stuff, but uh, really Stoke is the only confirmed in progress with active hardware that we've seen working on full reusability, including that second stage. Uh, they do have a very different different approach to this than the Starship, which makes them quite interesting. And they're actually a lot smaller than Starship as well. So it will be quite a feat if they can achieve complete reusability on a rocket of this size. They did just announce a major new funding round in October, raising $510 million and bringing their total capital raised to nearly a billion dollars now. Uh, they're currently refurbishing the Space Launch Complex 14 at Cape Canaveral with the site expected to be operational in early 2026. The team also recently wrapped their stage two qualification campaign in September with 100 plus pressurization cycles to prove that the structure can handle all the required loads. They've also been busy upgrading and hot firing their Zenith engine, stage two heat shield and more. The company's targeting 2026 for a first launch. Uh, I do hope this one happens, but it wouldn't shock me if we get a little bit more slippage on that front. Stoke also briefly made headlines after it was reported that OpenAI CEO Sam Altman had explored a takeover bid for them, looking to purchase the launcher to pursue data centers in space, something that is an extremely hot topic as we close out 2025, and I'm sure we're gonna hear more of. It looks like that takeover attempt did not go through. Personally, I do think the Nova while a great and interesting reusable rocket is probably too small for data centers in space. For something like that, I really feel like you need large and high scales to make it the economics work, but that's just my opinion. Anyway, Stoke does continue under the current capable management of Andy Lapsa.
And then we have Firefly Space's Eclipse rocket. Now, Firefly Eclipse, which was formerly known as Medium Launch Vehicle or MLV, is actually a joint project between Firefly and industry veteran Northrop Grumman. It's designed to bridge the gap between small satellite launchers and heavy lift rockets like the like the Falcon Heavy. The company actually IPO'd in August 2025 of this year, managing to raise over $800 million in fresh capital and making a ton of headlines in the process. Although it does have to be said, a lot of that $800 million is going towards a big acquisition of SciTech, a uh, defense company that will cost $855 million. Uh, this is, has an eye more towards the national security technology segment than uh, advancing Eclipse's launch. In May of 2025, Firefly also announced a new $50 million investment from Northrop Grumman to help accelerate the production of Eclipse. Just recently in December, the Firefly team did announce that they had completed 100 test firings of their Miranda engine at Test Stand 4 in the desert in Texas. We've also seen some images of their structures, including the LOX transfer line, the engine bay, propellant tanks, and composite dome structures. Like Neutron, MLV will be using carbon composites and has shared a video of their AFP machine also laying down fiber. Also like Neutron, Firefly is targeting a launch in 2026 from Wallops, Virginia, right next door to Neutron. Uh, I do expect this one to launch after Neutron and wouldn't shock me at all if it did end up getting pushed to 2027. Next up, we have Relativity Space. Now, 2025 has been quite a tumultuous year for the company. Uh, they actually ran out of funds during development of their Terran R rocket and were ultimately purchased by billionaire and ex-Google CEO Eric Schmidt. Now, Eric uh, has said that his reasoning behind purchasing Relativity is that he thinks space-based data centers are an imperative for the future. More launch capacity will be needed and having your own rocket will be extremely important for that space data center AI future, a trend we've been hearing a lot about lately. Uh, a lot of you will know Relativity for its original plans to 3D print their entire rockets, although the company has now pivoted away from that vision, they do still say 3D printing is a core strength of theirs. By late 2025, the team completed the first flight article Stage 1 fuel tank, which stands 163 feet tall. It was built by using a hybrid of 3D printing and friction stir welding. Their Aeon R engine is the first stage engine, which has been nearing qualification. The first stage will be powered by 13 of these engines, producing over 3.3 million pounds of thrust. The second stage vacuum engine has successfully completed a 475 second mission duty cycle hot fire test as well. The Long Beach structural test stand has also successfully proved the thrust structure could handle the 3.7 million pounds of force, simulating the stresses of a full power launch. And the massive renovation continues at the Cape Canaveral Launch Complex 16, where the HIF facility or horizontal integration facility, which is where the rockets are assembled, was fully framed and sited by November of this year. Liquid oxygen tanks or LOX tanks and lightning protection towers over 500 feet tall were also installed at the pad. In late 2025, Relativity also expanded its multi-launch agreement with global satellite operator SES. The contract now includes multiple launches for SES's medium and geostationary orbit satellites. The company enters 2026 with over $3 billion in pre-sold launch contracts. Although some critics do say they feel these contracts were signed way too far in advance of the rocket being ready, so much so and so cheaply that it may be difficult for the company to make much profit on those early launches. 
Relativity also completed the conceptual design review for the Block 2 of their Terran R, which will focus on long-term performance upgrades and reuse. The maiden flight of Terran R is currently scheduled for late 2026 from Cape Canaveral. Now, one development I didn't expect this year was from Honda, and yes, I do mean the car company. They showed off a rocket that they had been working on this year, a prototype reusable rocket that they had a test launch of in June. Now, while this was just a small hop test, not unlike the early Starship hops, and the company still has a very long way to go with a 2029 goal of a suborbital flight, Honda views rockets as a way to launch their own satellite constellation to support connected car features and autonomous driving. Personally, I'd say it's a bit of a long shot that this one ends up amounting to an industry player in the future, but with a big name like Honda in the mix and a hop flight on video, I did think it was interesting and worth a mention. Of course, we also do have Starship, and this will just be a brief overview. There's a lot of channels that cover its development in excruciating detail. So if you're interested even further, you can check there. But in 2026, it's fair to say that Starship did experience its fair share of ups and downs, and yes, pun intended. In 2025, SpaceX completed test flights seven through 11, with some early failures on the upper stage causing a bit of consternation among SpaceX fans. However, they've also successfully performed a tower catch of a first stage booster, a truly awesome achievement, and I mean that in the old school sense of the word. They also reflew a booster for the first time and successfully deployed dummy startling satellites, as well as managed a soft touchdown with the second stage in the ocean. After Flight 11, Starship V2 architecture has now been officially retired and SpaceX turns their focus to Starship V3. V3 will boast new Raptor 3 engines, an integrated hot stage ring, massively increased payload capacity, larger stretch tanks, and a reduction from four grid fins to just three. However, V3 has gotten off to a bit of a rough start because on November 21st, the first V3 Super Heavy booster suffered a structural failure during ground testing and the whole thing had to be scrapped. This pushed the debut of V3 to 2026 and booster 19. A critical priority for SpaceX in 2026 will be to work on and pursue ship to ship propellant transfer in space in order to stay on track or at least mostly on track with their Artemis lunar lander commitments to NASA. And Elon Musk has actually already begun teasing a Starship version 4 for 2027, which is expected to be stretched even further to a massive 140 meters tall. Blue Origin may have impressed space fans with their upgraded 9x4 New Glenn, but SpaceX says to that, hold my beer, because V4, V4 of Starship looks to have an astounding 200 plus tons of payload mass to low Earth orbit with complete reusability. With a lot of, with a lot more tests and upgrades in the future for Starship, 2026 is certainly shaping up to be another interesting year. While I didn't cover them in much detail today because I was running out of time, it's probably worth an honorable mention to for ULA's Vulcan rocket, which did get off the ground this year, as well as Ariane Space's Ariane 6 rocket, although both of those are not reusable at this moment. Uh, ULA is, from what I understand, still pursuing their smart reuse strategy for recovery of those BE-4 engines, which they purchased from Blue Origin. So those are some of your rocket updates for today. Do let me know which rocket you're most excited about in 2026. Which ones do you think are going to make it and ultimately which ones will fail because generally rocket programs have a very high failure rate. It's never been a more exciting time for the space industry and I'm so happy to be alive right now and get to witness it all as well as participate in investing in some of these great companies. Oh yeah, I guess I didn't even mention SpaceX is planning to IPO in 2026, something that will make the year even bigger for that company. Please do subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you again to the current channel members. I hope you guys have a great day and a great rest of the week. I'll see you soon for the next video. Bye for now.